Great opportunity to catch up with Richard Bromley. I'm going to call you the race day secretary because you have that role for quite a few clubs, don't you? Yeah, just help out the country clubs around the Canterbury region, though. So Ashburn is one of those ones on the hit list. So, yeah, do a bit of work for them racing orientated. So, yeah, right, yeah, thoroughly enjoy it. All right. Looking forward to this Sunday because it's got a feel to it of the old Queen's birthday Monday with races like the Sapling Stakes and a couple of new ones, Richard. Uh, there's some depth to some of the support races too, so it should be a good program. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on there, Greg, as you say, the Sapling Stakes, but the Champion Stakes and the newly Helen Pope for the two-year-old filly. So hopefully these three get a bit of um, recognition over the years to come, but there's a bit of, as you say, a bit of depth in those three quality fields. Yeah, first race for you, 18 minutes past 12. Uh, let's have a look at the first. Well, it's not even deemed a feature, but it's going to be an excellent race. It's for the fillies and mares, the Stuart and Holland uh, mobile trot over the 1,700 metres. The class mare in it is time up the hill. She did such a great job as a three-year-old, but there's a whole lot of inform uh, mares in this. Martha Stewart loves a mobile. will go forward. Bright Glow, one of the great stories uh, of the handicapping system, if you like. She's won plenty of money now, as has the likes of... Uh, I dream of Jeannie. So a deep sort of a race to kick off the features. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. As you say, Time Up the Hill does have the quality feature about her. Uh, Crusher Collins and Lyndon Bonds, they will be very, very hard to, well, not hard to beat, but be right in the recognition as well with the outside draw as well. But as you say, Bright Glow, she's a she's tough mare. She'll be right in the mix as well. But um, it'll be very hard to go past the Michael Ward train, Time Up the Hill with Katie Cox doing the driving. As you say, race number three on the 18 race car. But um, she's on top for me, Time Up the Hill. Yeah, I think she's the best bet in the race, the class factor there, and uh, looking forward to seeing her again. She is a bit of quality. The Helen Pope, two-year-old fillies, when you think of contributions to harness racing, and she's been recognised at the highest level for that, Helen Pope and the Ashburton region, they go hand in hand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Helen Pope, she's a very character. If you, you get to have a yarn with her, but she's um, an icon down the Ashburton sort of area and have that race named after her, she'll be wrapped. And um, there's only five fillies in there, but it's a good five too. There's a lot of depth in with those five fillies to contest race number four, the Helen Pope two-year-old filly stakes. Yeah, looking forward to, uh, to the clash again, if you like, of the Purden Cullen runners. Uh, Tiff's little sister locked wheels last week, so didn't get her a chance. Millwood Nike didn't lock wheels. She lit her wheels up and flew down the outside at Temaru. That does not happen very often on debut. She's got to be the one to beat. Absolutely. She's saying some real zip. And she'd showed that zip at the trials about three or four weeks ago. And she went out at $4 on Sunday at Timaru. She won't be paying $4 this week, but um, she's got high speed. But as you say, your Tiff's little sister uh, did lock wheels, as you say, in that last race at Timaru with a clear run. Uh, she's going to uh, provide very stiff opposition uh, for Millwood Nike. I expect her to be favourite Millwood Nike, and she'll be very, very tough to bowl. All right. Smallish field for the first edition of that contest. A bit of a step back in time, a race named the Champion Stakes has been won by some good horses many, many years ago, but it's back with rural business accountants for the three-year-old. You've ended up with a seven-horse field, but, gee, there's some quality here. Republican Party, outstanding winning last time. Uh, Oneidin Mickey Luckless at Addington last week. Cyrus keeps on finding one better. Bubba Scrub finally cleared Maidens last week and did it in great order. An invitation only is a horse I've got a bit of time for, so... Good race, race number six. Yeah, absolutely agree. Republican Party, very good at winning Addington last start. We'll probably start the favourite for the event. We'll be tough to beat. As you say, Cyrus has been the bridesmaid on the last couple of occasions. Uh, you have to put him in the mix with a, with an economical run. He's going to give the favourite something to look about. And as you say, Odin Mickey, who was very good at the start of his career, just taped off a wee bit, but we know he has got the X factor. And of course, absolute dynamite might be the sneaky here. His last couple of runs have been very, very good. Of course, ran into Wheelers of Fortune in the graduation final at Rangira after tough run. Uh, but Join at three at the champion stakes. It's going to be one heck of a race. All right. If you had to have one bet in it, though, who would it be on? I think Republican Party, with its win last start at Addington, will start the sort of favourite shorts. I'll be with the Crandall Giddy uh, Blair Orange factor in that race. All right. Let's and move Chrissy, to of course. Milk New Zealand, Sapling Stakes, $50,000 drawn a field of uh, nine. And there's, again, a bit of depth to this. I'll be taken by the performances of Vinka B in each of his three runs to date. Uh, wish me luck on debut last week was excellent. Obviously, with style, got the win last week. They're all from the Purden and uh, Cullen Barn. And that's not including Dear Devil, who did a bit of work last week too. They were the first four home in that maiden two-year-old at Addington. And 
I think they're likely to dominate this race, at least you can tell me otherwise, Richard. Uh, the two uh, tend to agree to you with Greg here, because um, with Stoll capitalised on a very good run, Addington to score uh, last week. Vinka B, as you say, did a bit of work in the running. Uh, this run was very, very good. The draws are sort of reversed this time, so you expect Vinka B to be one of the favourites for this race and be very, very hard to beat. But Dear Devil was very good, and of course, uh, um, Wish Me Luck wasn't that far away as well. The other ones in the race, Trial Boss has been trialling up very well for Terry McMillan at Ashburton, and with a good run, could be the Smoky. Even the real McCoy showed a bit of gate speed off the trials yesterday out of Angura and fought on quite close. It was a 56 and 26 for the last sectionals in that two-year-old race, uh, with uh, Boris Ciccone, uh winning that race as well. So the first starters, keep an eye on them. They won't be far away. Yeah, it's a great race, the Sapling Stakes. Uh, many of the good horses come out of that. Anything on the undercard, Richard, that we should keep an eye out for, that uh, you'll be keeping your ear to the ground, putting these fields together? You've got some insight for us. Do like Morrissey, but in race number seven, hit the line really well at Timber on Sunday. Has drawn one second row, so might have a few traffic problems, but if it gets clear air, uh, the Jared O'Reilly for the Duns will be very, very tough to beat in race number seven. And Paraki Reactor in the last uh, has been well supported last couple of runs. Tim Williams for, of course, Grant Payne. Not a bad draw, but I reckon that's each way value in the last as well, Paraki Reactor. All right, excellent program there Sunday. I'm sure it'll attract a lot of attention, particularly with those feature races. Uh, Richard, thanks for your time. Looking forward to the first getting underway at 18 minutes past 12. That's Ashburton on Sunday.